When it comes to broadband imaging, it's usually recommended to go to a dark site where the skies are as dark as possible. However, if you're in an area that has light pollution, then using a broadband light pollution filter will be your next best option. I'll be testing a new filter that I purchased recently on a galaxy that I photographed for the first time three years ago. I got a head start on some new data a couple nights ago, so tonight I'll be collecting additional data to add to the project. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session. As I continue to test a new filter on Messier 33, also known as the Triangulum Galaxy. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 33, or the Triangulum Galaxy, is a spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Triangulum at a distance of 2.73 million light years away from Earth. Discovered by Charles Messier on August 25, 1764, the Triangulum Galaxy is the third largest member of the local group of galaxies behind the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy contains about 40 billion stars, has a diameter of 60,000 light years, and a mass of 3 to 6 billion solar masses. It is also believed that the Triangulum Galaxy is a satellite of the Andromeda Galaxy due to their interactions, velocities, and proximity to one another in the night sky. So to photograph M33, I'll be using my largest triplet apochromatic refractor telescope the Orion Eon 130ED. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And of course, as per usual, this will all be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And to help minimize the light pollution, as well as maintain the natural colors, I'll be testing the Optolong L-Quad Enhance, my newest broadband light pollution filter. So without further ado, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Triangulum Galaxy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've completed my polar alignment, star alignment, focusing routines, and guiding procedures. So I'm now inside of APT, and my imaging session for the Triangulum Galaxy is now underway. So you can see the core of M33 near the center where my cursor is. And you can also see some faint structure of the galaxy around the core as well. 
Now, although M33 is a large galaxy, it's quite diffuse, so it has a low surface brightness, similar to M101, the pinwheel galaxy. So to locate this in the field of view, I used my pointer star technique. So if you're curious to know how I did that, you can watch my video on my imaging session for the pinwheel galaxy where I talk about pointer stars. So a couple nights ago, last Wednesday, during my first imaging session on this subject, I unfortunately ran into some technical difficulties. I had a lot of issues with my go-to functionality on my mount. Even though everything was perfectly aligned, I was still having some trouble pointing the telescope towards the galaxy. So after doing some troubleshooting, I was able to fix the problem. However, that did cost me some integration time. So I was only able to grab about 90 minutes of data last Wednesday, so an hour and a half. So tonight I'm taking a series of three minute exposures and my goal is to hopefully get three hours of data tonight if I can. I guess it all depends on the battery power on my computer to see how long that lasts, but we'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. So apart from that, everything seems to be going according to plan. So as per usual, I'll be taking as many three minute exposures as I can, and I'll continue to monitor the imaging session and just see how the night progresses. Hey everybody, just wanted to give you all a quick update. It's a little bit after midnight and I did a quick focus check and now I slewed back to the Triangulum Galaxy to continue the imaging session. So I wanna take a quick moment to talk about broadband imaging. As the name implies, this imaging focuses on a broad range of light on the visible spectrum. And this will show your subject in its true color. Now, as I mentioned earlier, broadband imaging is usually done from a dark site where the skies are as dark as possible. And you also want to do this during the phase of the new moon, or if the moon is already up in the sky, wait for it to set on the horizon a little bit. But if you're somebody like me who's in the suburbs, or if the nearest dark site is several hours away from you, although it can be challenging, you can still do broadband imaging from a suburban area. But you have to use a specialized light pollution filter. So tonight I've been testing the new Optolong L Quad Enhance broadband light pollution filter, which is the successor to the Optolong L Pro that I've been using for the last few years. So whenever you receive a broadband light pollution filter, it usually comes with a transmission graph to show you how the filter works. So for this graph, which represents the Optolong L Quad Enhance, which I'll refer to as the LQE, the white line represents the filter, and everything underneath the white curve is what's being passed through the filter, whereas everything outside of the white curve is what's being blocked. So that's your unwanted light pollution gradients. And most light pollution falls under the sodium and mercury transmission lines. And to my knowledge, I believe that the Optolong LQE also blocks the new LED lights that are being installed on city streets. 
Also, as the quad implies in the Optolong LQE, apart from it passing through specific parts of the red, green, and blue light, it will also pass through the four main emission lines of deep space objects. So this includes hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta, sulfur two, and oxygen three. So this filter can be used on a wide array of deep space objects that includes various galaxies, star clusters, and nebulae targets. And specifically with galaxies, if your galaxies have pockets of hydrogen alpha sprinkled through it, such as the Triangulum Galaxy that I'm photographing tonight, the Andromeda Galaxy, Bode's Galaxy, the Cigar Galaxy, etc., this filter will help to enhance those features so you can pull those details out a little bit better when you're doing your post-processing. So for my situation, I have a combination of both the old and new lights in my area. I have the sodium and mercury vapor lamps, but they're slowly being phased out into the new LED lights. So I believe the Optolong LQE should be useful for my situation. So if you're stuck in the suburbs, I would still encourage you to try broadband imaging but make sure that you use the proper light pollution filter. It's just a matter of doing your proper research, figure out which light pollution is in your area, and then select the filter that works best for your environment. Hey everybody, so I was able to complete my imaging session tonight and I'm about to wrap things up. I was able to capture two and a half hours of data on M33 tonight. So I fell a little bit short of my goal, but putting that together with what I did last Wednesday, I should hopefully have enough data to create a respectable image. And I think the Optolong L Quad Enhance did a really great job tonight so i'm looking forward to seeing the details that i'm able to pull out during my post-processing so as you can see i'm getting ready to shoot my calibration frames and once i finish that i'll just pack everything up and go home so thank you for watching astro park please enjoy my processed image of the triangulum galaxy at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.